So kia ora everybody and welcome to our TENS webinar for this week. Um, my name is Sarah Washbrook, or Sarah Washbrook Talk Ingwa, um, and I am Deputy Chair from TENS Technology Education New Zealand. Uh, we surround support obviously lots and lots of different educators from ECE all the way through to tertiary in the area of technology education and today we have a, a wonderful person who has come to join us and we're we're even more proud because it's actually just joined us on the TENS Council to help and support us as well in the future. However, I will introduce in a moment, we will start off today's session. My computer's beeping at me. Uh, we will start off today's session with our karakia. Māori ora ki a mato, arahina mato, mato, ki a mato mahi, ki mihia he huarahi, moti kopapa, o matoranga o hangarau, Afina atu, afina mai, tipo e here, ne e amato, huye taihie. So once again, so we are welcoming uh, Kai Wigley today, who is coming all the way from Spotswood College, um, and he's going to be talking to us today about disrupted learning. So Claire, not only is she one of our amazing TENS Council people now, welcome on board, Claire, um, but she her background is in design and technology and has been teaching from year one to year 13 as well. So very helpful for the TENS Council in very various areas of the DT curriculum. Um, currently working as an inquiry specialist teacher teaching creative industries at Spotswood College and um, during the webinar itself um, Claire will be presenting if you have any questions at all you can pop your questions into the Q&A box which should be um, in the webinar and at the end of the presentation we will answer your questions. Be aware that today's session will be recorded and will be available for you after the event too. So that's all from me and I will now pass over to Claire. Hi everybody, um, I'll just share my screen with you so we can get started. Right. So um, just starting with my first slide here, this is literally the very first uh, the first piece of information I ever received from Spotswood College when I first started, um, when I went in for my interview with my chat with the team members there. Uh, this is pretty much what our school is all about, which is what I'm going to talk to you about today. Um, so, ko rangitoto te maunga, ko waitamata te awa, no tamaki makoto aho, ke taranaki toku keinga anayane, ko Nick toku tane, ko Pascal rato, ko Imogen, ko Hudson oku tamariki, ko Claire toku ingwa. Hi, um, my name's Claire. I'm from Auckland originally. Um, moved overseas. Uh, lived in the UK for three years, I think. They moved to Canada and lived in Montreal, French-speaking Canada, for seven years, and then have moved back from Canada down to New Plymouth um, to be close to the surf beach. <laughs> Obviously not my choice. Um, and I've been here for about 10 years now. Um, gone through the Education Refresher Program, um, did some time at uh, the beautiful um, small Catholic school, St. John Bosco, with my um, mentor, Kushla, for my um, Education Refresher. And then was taught at Sacred Heart Girls College as the textiles technology teacher. Then I moved to Pukitapu School in Balbrop for four years, uh, where the principal there <laughs> put it on a plate and was like, do you want to come? We want to stop running tech um, outside of the school. We run it in our school. Can you come and start our tech program? So sort of spent four years planning that program, um, teaching everything and anything that the kids really wanted to do in a very limited space, an old um, converted dental clinic, which was slightly terrifying when I first started. Um, and then at the beginning of this year, I decided to move back into high school um, to Spotswood College. Uh, right. I was trying to find some funny images and stuff to try and explain a little bit about um, how our school works. Uh, being a disrupted school. It's not a traditional silo school. We don't teach a English class and a math class and a science class. Um, we are very much 
Um, what I would say looks quite chaotic, but is actually incredibly structured. Um, the uh, All of the student learning is based around what the kids want to do. Uh, there is no compulsory subjects at the school. Um, everybody does do numeracy and literacy, but there is no um, sort of compulsory in the senior school of subjects. And everything is taught um, through different mediums. So your English through art or your numeracy through art. I'm just gonna show you this quick video. This really explains, um, sums our school up to a T really about what we are like. This week's homework, gravity. Projects are due on Friday, please. Homework, oh, homework, I hate you. You guys ready? You stink. I wish I could wash you away in the sink. I'd rather eat spinach and liver, pet 10 porcupines. Then tackle the homework my teacher assigns. Homework. Oh, homework. You were last on my list. I simply can't see why you even exist. If you just disappeared, it would tickle me pink. Next up. Homework. Oh, homework. I hate you. You stink. not about homework but our school is about getting outside of the classroom it's about putting all of our practices everything that we're learning into everyday situations and getting the kids to be really innovative with the way that they think so Spotswood College is the only co-ed high school in New Plymouth and we have a, a boys high girls high and a Catholic girls and Catholic boys school and us uh, we have a role of just under 900 students at the moment, and we're what was a decile of five. So our wonderful principal, um, Nicola Narua, who she came from Party Area School um, in about 2018, I believe. Um, and she is the person that is really activating change within our school. So the culture of our school is really based on our whānau. Um, we have a really strong family structure, a lot of really strong relationships with our kids. We're trying to create safe environments where students can really gain a sense of belonging and, and feeling of who they truly are. We have a lot of powerful power, um, partnerships sorry, with our families and uh, wider communities um, who are key um, aspects of our learning community. We are trying to get our young people to be well equipped with skills to be positioned like entrepreneurs, designers, innovators, um, to help lead the world into a better, a better tomorrow. So we're one of six schools in New Zealand um, that are in the Disrupt Ed program. So I've got the schools there on the screen for you. Um, and we have a shared goal to give students problem solving abilities and a, set, a, device, a diverse set of skills to be successful in this sort of changing world. So our school has totally revamped the curriculum um, from the beginning of 2009. Um, and we run a real student-centered timetable. So the curriculum is personalized to each student. So everyone has their own program of learning. It takes a lot of time and a lot of planning. I'm, just, I'm discovering, it's my first year there. So, um, and it really meets the individual needs of the students, um, their interests and their passion, passion, pass, pass, passions, sorry. Um, and these are the three, the six, sorry, core competencies that we underpin everything around. So our school is semesterized um, instead of terms, and this is a look of what our, our junior timetable looks like. So this is a year nine, uh, nine and ten timetable, where we have numeracy and literacy first thing um, Monday to Thursday. We have three different STEAM classes, so that's um, three standalone subjects, they're not all together. Our impact inquiry slots, we have two two-hour slots of that a week. Um, the first one in the first semester is rotating around the um, different types of um, inquiry bubble that you're going to be in. So I'll explain a little bit about that later. Um, and then the last one is working through a um, impact inquiry project. 
Um, and learning advisory is our kind of like form room time. Um, we also do our um, New Zealand histories and health curriculum through that space. Active movement, everyone in the junior school does active movement. Um, this varies. <laughs> I have, I think I have a Hikoi class, so I've, I've got the walkers. We do a lot of walking around. Um, but we, if you've got any kids in any high level sports, that's when they're doing their sports practices. And it varies, you know, yoga, walking, sports, games, just whatever we're doing. It's a really an hour each time where kids are not on devices and we're preferably outside and we are, we, trying to improve our, our whole order and well-being by being connected to outside and being moving around. We have widening of the mind um, and community connect. A lot of our subjects um, base uh, language subjects come through in widening of the mind so that's really a chance for kids to learn a little bit more about different things that they might be interested in or following their passions and then their community connect. So this is, um, I'm going to show you the course booklet, how we do the course selection booklet, but this is just a screenshot here of the literacy. So at year nine and 10, these are all of the um, subjects that are offered in semester one next year for literacy. Um, so sometimes it combines one subject area, sometimes it combines another, it might have two as well as literacy. Um, so this really relies on a really um, student lead um, decision making time these kids need to be able to have student agency and pick what they're going to do um, so coming from teaching year eight into year nine this year and bringing students with me from my old school um, I know that this was a really hard process um, I think it's still something that we're working on refining um, you know we're getting these kids to make pretty big decisions about what they want to do and they don't necessarily even been given these options before to pick from them. So it does lead to um, a lot of uh, time being spent on it. Um, normally the first semester can be a little bit messy, second semester they have a bit better of an idea what they want to do. Um, I'm just going to click into here and show you how our student, our course selection works, just to give you another a uh, better idea. Um, so we click into our STEAM so this is next year's STEAM classes and in the different subject areas that they can go into. Hospitality, food is always very popular as any uh, high school teacher would know. Um, and then we just have a real range of different options that kids can pick from for their classes. So um, we, you know, we spend a lot of time trying to write courses that kids are gonna find interesting. Um, generally they only read the first name they don't normally go in and read all the descriptions that people spent time doing so um it's really we've got to get in there pretty quick and try and and explain everything very quickly around what we want to do um i'm sorry i'm just going to I need to move this oh, there we go okay so this is that's our uh, junior course selection booklet. So our senior school looks a little bit different. I don't have a lot of experience in this. I'm only teaching year nine and 10. Um, but again, they have their numeracy and literacy and then they have their learning programs. Um, and the, the one I've screenshotted there is just an example, I think, of the learning program one. So you can see in the columns um, EFG, that's whether it's a level one, two or three course. We've got the, the um, types of courses that are run together and then whether it's covering the numeracy and literacy credits. So a lot of time, like all of our students have picked their, all of their courses for next year already, um, just so that we can try and make sure we have enough teachers and classes set up for everything that everybody wants. And generally they do get their first, their first choice. If we have a lot of students that want to pick one specific one, we'll put extra teachers on to make sure that um, we can uh, meet their needs. Um, lots of writing on this one. So why we teach, so inquiry is my specialist area and I really love it as a standalone subject. A lot of people will teach it um, as part of design technology or you might have, I um, you know my old school, we would have a, a theme for the term around innovation and awaha. And then this is where our inquiry comes in. So at year nine and 10, they do four hours a week of inquiry learning. These are all the amazing reasons why we would do inquiry and I'm sure any school that teaches it or has this process would definitely understand 
um, providing social and thinking space for innovation, um, design processes and procedures, recognizing the latest and future issues and challenges. We're looking at state-of-the-art perspectives, um, developing innovation and growth mindset, and I would say a lot of student agency, they need to take control of their learning and understand all the processes around it. So within our inquiry, hopefully I'm not talking too fast, sorry. Um, within our inquiry, we have different bubbles. So I'm Creative Industries, which covers anything from art to technology. Um, uh, so fine arts, arts, textiles, uh, laser cutting, any types of technology. We have science and technology, which also covers robotics. Um, these will be the kids that might enter into the science fair that we have locally. Um, we have robotics kids that enter competitions every couple of weeks. They've got teams doing that. Uh, we've got the arts, which is our performing arts and dance and music. Primary industries, so um, anything to do with being outside, um, vegetables, horticulture, farming. We have a, a little farm in our school that the kids go and work on, um, planting plants. Business and enterprise, we follow the um, young enterprise scheme. We've had huge success with kids developing amazing products for that. And our sports, our sporty bubble was our sport and recreation. We follow the Stanford D School um, design thinking process, which I'm sure everybody's seen before. Um, this is how we mark all of our units of work. Um, we have got our own, if you see on the right hand side, our inquiry learning there that goes through. So we teach every single element of this to these kids and make sure they have a very deep understanding um, with lots of help around what they can do. One of the ways that we do that, um, oh, I'm sorry, we base all of our inquiry learning um, this year anyway on our global um, sustainable goals. So to start off our inquiry classes, we go through what all these goals are with our kids. And then depending on um, what type of inquiry you want to do, uh, like with my class, we'll narrow it down to sort of three or four that we think are the most important ones. And from that, the kids are going to base their whole inquiry project around one of these um, goals. Some of them are a bit more self-directed. Um, some of them lend themselves very clearly, like life on land, for example, or, or climate action to the primary industry. So they might just look at those ones. Um, it can be quite guided at the beginning. Um, generally it is very guided at the beginning um, and then we slowly open it up and open it up and then when we get into year 10 they take a lot more control. Um, so one of our amazing teachers designed this game and this is the superstar game of design thinking and um, as I'm new at the school I, I started this with my kids um, this year where we sort of gamified um, the process for them so they could go through um, and and have different challenge cards so they would have to pick a card that would give them a whole range of ideas of how they might want to run their inquiry um, and, and have their work so this is a really valuable tool really valuable um, so since we've been doing this, about 2019, we changed our curriculum um, and it's been a work in progress and it is changing all the time. We've completely redeveloped next year's uh, model for year nines um, to incorporate uh, much more school values and our local community values. Um, but uh, this is a, an article that was written about um, our inquiry program through the Education Gazette. So from this, we've had funding to um, get the beehives, we've got the chicken run, we've got a market garden. We also um, do a lot of um, growing plants for riparian planting and native trees. And then uh, we've created the, the picture on the bottom left-hand side of the container there, um, a shop called the Designery which is outside the front of our school. I'm gonna show you a little clip about that in a minute. Um, and that is a way for our kids to have a place um, to sell their products, um, to get exposure. We also work really closely with um, a local business in town called The Collaboration, which works with local artists. So we have a lot of art exhibitions and stuff through there as well. So we're always having these really big links to our community and Enviro schools as well. So I'll show you this. Ooh. 
Okay. Um, through this video, and this is a really good explanation. Um, it's about four minutes long, but it goes through some of the processes, some of the kids and some of their projects that they're working on. Um, I'm creating a children's book for children aged about three to six um, about high functioning autism and autism in children to try and um, get more understanding and acceptance towards them. So our project is to grow microgreens and sell them to the like wider community around Spotswood College. Microgreens are like little salads practically and you can also use coriander and other herbs and curries to make them with flavour. Um, this project is a designing project, so I design garments that are based off Disney characters and the fashion today and bringing back old fashion trends into today. Um, my name is Swana and my inquiry subject is to uh, design murals for women. In the future, I hope to work with younger children to get them into art. My name is Zara and I'm doing an inquiry based around building houses for the homeless. I think it really appealed to me because I've always had an eye for design and architecture and so when it came up and I, was, and I had the opportunity to actually design a way to reduce the homeless population in New Zealand, I think that's, I took it and I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. I've had the opportunity to also use a range of different um, design techniques Every time you use a different um, program, it shows you a different way to do something. And so, using Minecraft, I'm actually actually able to visualize what I'm about to build. And building using paper, I'm able to take it down right down to the detail. Hi, my name is Terry, and I like this type of learning because it gives me scouts out of the bathroom and all my lights. Hi, I'm Jack, and I help build this sports and contract, which gets used by the whole community. Hi, my name is Dan, and this year's inquiry is to build a uh, mountain bike track for the school. <laughs> um, so my project for my design class is um, I'm designing a futuristic car company um, with super like high-tech new cars um, and for inquiry I am sort of adding to that by animating the cars and making them like drive and move and you know making making my project come to life. I'm able to you do my own type of learning when, no, when I'm able to self-direct and that really appeals to me because I'm an independent learner and I'm able to um, do it at my own pace and my own direction and own speed and I really enjoy that. Cool, so that's just a 
give you a little idea of why our kids are, uh, what they're getting out of their inquiry learning and, and why they're choosing to come to our school because it is really different um, than other schools that we have in our local area. I spoke before about the designery. So the designery is a student-led um, and run and organized shop that's outside of our, our school. Um, this is a little video that they made to explain what it's about and why we do it. Say that. We have an idea. Imagine if schools could better connect with their communities. Imagine if students could express their creativity and share it with their families. Imagine if we made money that feeds back to the school in a sustainable way. Imagine a place where you could buy your eggs and pay for it with seeds. The designery is a self-sustainable creative space that aims to provide an outlet for school projects and authentic learning situations. For example, Spotswood College has a junior class that creates a market garden. We would like to provide a space which connects their products to real life customers, real people. Students could gain barista experience and qualifications in our own cafe within the designery. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Fill out our survey and contribute to our community. Can you imagine the future? Was one of our students' work um, for the promotion of the designery. We have um, an idea. They do all of their posts, they man the shop, uh, they have pretty much full control of everything that goes on and then everything that gets sold comes back into the inquiry program so that we can keep resourcing and, and building it up for um, all the other kids that are coming through. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it really. Um, I hope that's given you a little bit of information and if you have any questions, just just give me a shout and let me know. Um, hopefully I didn't speak too fast. <laughs> um, yeah, so thanks for coming. Oh, stop it. Wow, Claire, I mean, I must say that was very inspiring. Um, just coming from obviously coming from a technology teaching background myself, but seeing how it can be done in such an innovative way to really inspire that self-direction from the students, to really hook and engage them in their own passions and their own interests, and also to weave in all your local connections as well to make it really meaningful too. Um uh, yeah i'm quite blown away i've not seen i've not seen a curriculum thing set up like that we've got we've got a couple of questions um coming in um okay. so i'll just i'll ask one of the, oh yeah actually sorry it's not a question it's melinda saying amazing <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah so um i'll just wait a minute just to see if anybody else is going to come up with any questions i've just got a couple because obviously coming yep. from more of that uh, it, it, traditional way of teaching technology is the learning area, even though even um, with myself, I was yeah, we're very integrated across all different types of materials and processes and things. But seeing it in put in such a different way, I just I was just I'm very excited about how the approach of this. So um, something I was wondering was obviously on the timetable, you've got um, you've got the STEAM and you've got the impact inquiry. What's the difference between STEAM and impact inquiry? Because they both sound really technological to me. Yes, well, the, the STEAM can kind of be a bit more um, specific around a specific area or, or a specific subject, whereas the inquiry is actually just teaching and learning using that inquiry process. So they might be learning skills from in their STEAM classes. Um, I, for example, have taught um, street mural art, street art. Um, we're doing disposable art and fashion at the moment where we're uh, making skateboards on the laser cutter and then we're creating artwork out of them and, and cutting and painting. Um, we do... Um, I can't even remember, I'm doing a, a coding one at the moment as well. Um, so I think it's more, the STEAM is more learning all of those little skill-based lessons and then you're applying that to your project within whatever bubble you're in for your in inquiry class. Awesome. Okay, that's good. That just clarifies the difference between yeah. the two of them really, which is cool. We've got a question coming that says, how do you get around challenges of testing? So obviously linking directly to the process. Well, testing is the part is our last part of the of our inquiry process that we have to do. Um, so, with regards to like a, a product or or something like that, is that what we're meaning for testing, or like just how how do we go about doing testing in general? 
do you know? <laughs> yeah, it just says challenges. So maybe talk about both potentially. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, obviously not everything works, right? So sometimes you, you can make something and it's not going to work. Um, that testing is a huge part of that, the la well, the last part of that inquiry process that we have to do. Um, and the students have to go about, about testing their things. Um, obviously, you know, there's things like... Um, housing for for community housing and stuff you're not really going to be able to test that um, you might be able to test your designs and your concepts with people around you but really understanding that you everybody will have a, a target market of people like it's really very similar to you know what you're probably doing in technology anyway but um understanding that you need to have that voice from your target market who is the audience you're making it for and then trying to get the best type of testing you can possible I mean it's not going to work for everything um, there were different levels varying levels of testing that we can do and I think linking on to that as well we've got a couple of queries um, coming in uh, in regards to assessments like um, how how do you select and propose the standards that students are going to be assessed against for NCEA well we're only doing inquiry as a year nine and ten subject so they don't actually teach it so it's really teaching them the skills so they can then go and use that for NCEA um, with regards to how we market, um, at this stage, they will get a um, achieve merit or excellence or not achieve across the five different areas of that of the inquiry process. But, um, you know, like I said, we are restructuring it and changing it at the moment to incorporate different things. So next year we will have inquiry, but it will also incorporate um, some New Zealand history elements into it as well and then you could get your literacy and numeracy coming out of that as well but because we have standalone numeracy and literacy classes it's sort of that kind of stays over there so we're not really looking at that side of it but it's really just learning those skills and how they can work for the, for this work generally they work in groups as well so um, you don't need to be doing it on your own so there's a real um, look at how they're going to collaborate with each other and how they're going to communicate. And it's it's not about cooperation, it's about collaboration and, and how they're going to um, work together as a team, which I, I don't know how everyone else is finding that. But, you know, a lot, I know a lot of kids that really struggle with that. And I think it's really, really important that they learn those skills. So this is the, a really good vehicle for that. Yeah, and directly linking to the key competences and those skills that they need for the future as well. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I did wonder whether you were going to get a question like this. So normally it's can we share the slides, but this time someone said, is the tuning in game available somewhere or is that specifically for your school? <laughs> oh, the, the game, the, the game, yeah. game. No, that is that is available. <laughs> um, I did mention it to um, my colleague who made it. I said, what's the deal with the game? Because I'm going to talk to people about the game. Um, <laughs> I'm actually doing a workshop at the conference, a little plug for the conference. I'm doing a workshop at the conference where I'm going to have the game. And I did say to her, you know, you really need to think about what you're doing. But, um, you know, again, that she went through that process and made that game. And then I think I was actually the first person to test it when I was at my old school um, as an intermediate teacher. And I went to her and said, what are you guys doing? Like, heaps of our kids come to your school. Um what are you doing? What do I need to be teaching these kids to get ready? So we, and I had that game. So I've, I've been using that game for a little while. Um, I will definitely find out a bit more about the game <laughs> and I'll let people know. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Even, even if we could maybe tensify it as a resource and we could put it out to everybody somehow, oh, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> yes, that's definitely worth the conversation. It's, it's really good. And the kids actually you know, they enjoy it because it is a game and, and some, it gets used to varying levels. Um, some people go through the entire game. Um, I started the game with my um, semester two. I had the same kids, but they started a new project and they just sort of, you know, it's really hard when you can do what you want and you can make your own decisions and then all of a sudden you have to make one and they're like, well, I don't really know what I want to do. And it's like, but you know what you like, you know, all these, you know, are you really into music? Are you really into gaming? Are, what is it, you know, what do you want to do? What are you passionate about? And that's when the roadblock comes in. So that's where the game's really good because there's lots of cards of just so many different things that I had never even thought of about how they can present it and, and how they can research and, and go through that process. So, yeah, it's a really good tool. So it opens them up more to actually thinking yeah. about how to work themselves through the process in different yeah, ways. Yeah, yeah. And then I, I went through the cards and I said, find all the cards of the things that you like. So it might be... Um, <laughs> Uh, designing a campaign for something it might be making an animation it might be doing a short film it might be making a product and then we sort of line them all up together and then we look at how 
generally they have a lot of similarities and then we sort of figure out, well, you want to look at, at how I've got a student at the moment who wanted to promote a or create a mentorship program for kids. Um, and we talked about big, big brothers, big sisters, Taranaki. We got them to come in and talk to her. Um, bless her heart, she's not there very, very often. <laughs> so she's trying really hard. And then we went through and we looked at all the different things that she could do to help promote it. And there's just cards and cards and cards of all the different things. And then it's just sort of, yeah, I mean, if you're in creative, it's it's you kind of follow these sets of cards. And if you're if you're doing something else, you might be, you know, performing arts, do something slightly different. So yeah, it's really cool. Oh. And actually another question just linking to the game that's come in is do you, do you think it would be suitable for working with senior students? Potentially yeah. in metalwork, it says. <laughs> in metalwork specifically. Gosh, that's one thing I haven't taught is metalwork. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I do. I think I think it's the type of tool that I think um, everybody will get something out of. Um, and whether you choose to use it and go through all of the processes or just sort of pick apart the bits that you need a lot of assistance with. Um, I might have to do another webinar. <laughs> Just the ins and outs of the game. <laughs> I think that's an awesome idea. We'll book you in for next year to run through that one. <laughs> yeah, someone else agrees. <laughs> I think that'll be amazing because we've done, obviously through turns as well, we've done a lot on different types of design thinking models and processes. And like, if anyone is interested, they're all on the YouTube channel because we've got the equity center design thinking, which is also like the next iteration on from the Stanford model. And then we've also got to add Arco. And so, yeah, so we've got lots of things which are linking and weaving in with what we have, uh, the, the different processes that we have uh, in New Zealand as well. Um, it'll be good to see this as a completely different approach potentially to um, engage and inspire the students to work through a process which would be yeah. very exciting well I'll right? definitely I will get some more information about it especially for anyone coming to the conference I'm a bit more prepared for that one but um, <laughs> yeah, I, can, I can definitely get us some more information on that fantastic um, I've just got a little question it's obviously you've only just recently come from um, at, at intermediate school and you've moved up into this school and it's not this isn't looking at the year levels because of course we can teach technology across all the year levels but how have you found that change from being more of a sort of siloed learning area teacher um, at intermediate to this much more open more creative process that's going on in um, Spotswood? Um, well, I was quite lucky because I said our intermediate was a feeder school for this school. And when I started, um, they were doing, you know, go off to this other school on the bus, you know, 60 kids on the bus and we're going to go and do your traditional technology subjects. Um, and they really wanted to have a change from that. So when I started, um, I contacted the school to find out what they were doing. So I had tailored our design technology to fit very much around to be student centered and it was manic it was crazy it really was and anyone who's done it you know I would have small classes everyone's like you've only got 15 kids and I said yeah but I've got 15 kids doing 15 different things and it's it's the best for them but it was really hard for me just to be on top of the organizing of it um previous to that I was in a traditional high school just just teaching textiles and I think you know one of the reasons I wanted to leave that was because it was boring I, I, you know just I was rinsing and repeating the same thing and I had great kids and there were great results but um, I think as the person who is giving them the knowledge and the inspiration to do stuff like I couldn't be bored and I'm definitely not this is I've got kids doing all sorts of crazy things and it and it's great um, but like I said it looks a bit chaotic and you just need to be super super organized with it so I, I thoroughly enjoy it and I'm learning stuff all the time I've got kids that are teaching me things all the time but within this space it's it's fine it, it, it doesn't matter you know you really I, I feel like I'm there to facilitate um, and help them with their thoughts and plans and it's all coming from them I'm just sort of teaching them the tools to maybe express themselves a bit more that's it. Yeah. And you've got someone who agrees with you saying, yeah, it's really hard work to try and do that for each and every single student. It's really um, hard. And like, I, I think about our school of, you know, 900 odd kids, 900 kids going through those spreadsheets when you're picking a literacy, well, to say you're nine and tens, for example, they're picking a literacy line and you've got 10 literacy options to, to learn literacy. And then all of a sudden it, it is, you know, it's a bit of a juggle trying to get everybody in there. And when it works well, it, it's great. 
um, when you get the kids that can't be bothered to do that and then they leave it to the last minute and then they get put in your class but they hate art or they hate technology then it you know it's hard work yeah. it's, it's really hard work but I think that student-centered learning like um you know, I really don't deal with behaviours or anything like that. Like these kids are there, they've picked to be in creative industries. They've picked to be, there's four teachers that teach creative industries um, and we're varying. One is like a fine arts, one's digital, digital arts and myself and, and my colleague Kendall are, are sort of more the hands on -y stuff. And and they, they just get in the right spot and then they just go with it. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and it, obviously people really enjoyed watching the videos because the, the, obviously your students are looking really engaged and proud to actually be part of the process too. And actually thinking back to what you were saying about the literacy and numeracy, even though it's literacy and numeracy, it's actually done in a different way. It's actually showcasing that literacy and numeracy is in every single learning area and um, every single teacher is, is responsible for the teaching of that aspect. Yeah. Um, and it's not a standalone silo subject either. It's it's something that is woven in too. And you yeah. can really see that coming through as well, which I think is really important in today's society um, because, you know, there has to be purpose to literacy and numeracy. Absolutely. You use it for real, for, it's real learning again, isn't it? Coming Yeah. In. And it's, you know, it is challenging. Like I'm, I teach a numeracy class and a literacy class and, and we're doing algebra and it's <laughs> painful. But, you know, um, it's really it's good though it's really good and, and it's it's actually a really powerful tool to see where all of these fit into your you know your art subject or your technology subject and, and I do, I'm teaching a digital art literacy class at the moment and there's tons of literacy in that you wouldn't necessarily think there would be but there's heaps heaps and heaps and it just sort of gets integrated and becomes part of it so yeah it's it's it wouldn't be everyone's cup of tea because it does challenge you as a teacher but it is really good Fantastic. Well, I think that's all of our questions that have come in today. And I just want to say a huge thank you for jumping on board. I did put you in the deep end a little bit of asking you to come and do this. But I'll tell you something, it was it's been amazing listening to um, not only what you do, but what the students do and seeing like that, like said, that seeing their engagement, seeing their motivation and seeing what they're creating as well. It's fantastic high level work. Um, it's, and obviously it's mind blowing. <laughs> Some of it is incredible. Yeah, I mean, just just looking at some of the examples from that designery in its own right, it seems to be yeah. phenomenal. Um, so it's, it's great to see this. And I'm really happy to see, I might have to come along to your workshop potentially if we don't <laughs> clash um, for the TENS conference too, just to find out a little bit further. And um, oh yeah, we'll, we'll keep in touch about the, about the design game for the people who are watching today as well. Definitely. <laughs> Um, for those people who have joined us today, please, we would really, really love your feedback. Um, if you can scan the QR code or you can go to this link here, this will be sent through to you at the end as well. Um, so we will send an email through with all of this information for you. Um, and please be aware, if you do want to watch the, the um, webinar again or you want to share it with colleagues, um, it will be uploaded onto our TENS YouTube channel. You will find all of our webinars there to help and support you as well with further professional learning too. Um, next month we have got the team from Code Avengers coming along and this time we are looking at AI and digital devices so book that one in your calendars the registration link will be up soon um, and as soon as it is up once again we will send that link out to you too as attendees for today and you've got a, a thank you for your very inspiring coming through as well Claire from today so it's not just me thinking that you're amazing and your school's awesome <laughs> so once again thank you very very much uh, We'll just finish today with the karakia. Ki amato katoa, ku amoto mato amato mahi, me ko papa hoki. Arahina mato, ka amato mahi ano, ki a fakatapua mato ki na. Ko papa me na mea e fakapono, menakatia mai mato. Thank you, everybody. Kakite and enjoy your evening.